Tanqua Artscape 2023. Um, my name is Matladi Matabane. I am a an audiovisual artist from the sort. Um, I am currently pursuing a master's degree in music, which is my first love, and. One of the primary reasons why I'm here in Tanqua to explore sound in this vast, beautiful space. I formally started uh, in the arts in 2020. I did a short bridging course because um, I have a planning background, so I needed to transition to the arts. So this is my very young journey into being an artist. Um, though I've been an artist all my life, I'm just taking it a little bit seriously now. So we are here now almost one week, right? Yeah. Tomorrow it's going to be one week. What does the landscape, what does the surrounding do to you? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, first, first day, Area 51 walk, I... I literally just broke down and allowed myself to be nurtured by the quietness and also confront my own self and hence artistry. Um, so I've been trying to listen, especially working with sound. I want to listen a bit more and not come in and throw this huge party in the desert. I want to listen and flow with all of this quietness. What did you hear? Love. Love, uh, a sense of belonging, which I think the secrecy of this place really carries out well. And if you're willing to feel it, it's, it's the first embrace. Um, I am feeling a lot of friendship developing. Uh, so usually if I'm home, well, Lesotho is a very small, small space. Uh, but being here, talking to people, I really feel connected, which is just working well with wanting to connect to the land and the people that are on it as well. You applied with an idea. Yeah. You came here. Have your plans changed? And if so, why? And what has changed? Um, what I would wanted to kind of explore is that um, the declaration of Lesotho as a British protectorate in 1868 um, was sort of a one-sided conversation. Um, this is also between Britain and I feel like it's a conversation between feminine energies. So even if land should be negotiated, it should be between female or feminine uh, entities. So I have um, this theory that every time I wear a blanket, I become this hero then I can negotiate very tough, uh, complex histories. So the sonic um, performance that I want to do was, uh, I titled it Interceptor. So I really wanted to sort of like disrupt that declaration as a thing, think of it as a, a document that is emitting certain frequencies. So what I want to do is to kind of disrupt those um, frequencies and try to restore things back to the natural order and also claim and feel welcome in this space. I, I know I come in as a Muntu and this is the land of the Kam and I'm also very humbled to come into the space and understanding that my own um, people 
also came into the space and changed it in certain ways. So um, also coming in as a humble fellow land occupier. Yeah. So what are you, are you still pursuing the same project or has it changed now? Or uh, I think it's changed a bit. I think it's changed a bit. Uh, but the concept is still to collect sounds from around here and make it into a sound journey, which I think is still rooted in the intention of communicating with the land, but also tapping and touching onto the history of the British uh, through the Cape to Lesotho. So I'm really just following that mm. uh, communication line, Cape Colony Lesotho, Britain, Britain, Cape Colony Lesotho. So I'm just like uh, inserting myself yeah. into that conversation. As an artist, you usually do your projects alone, right? Mostly. So how does this residency program where a lot of artists are around you, how does this interfere or support or disrupt or whatever? Uh, is there any kind of interaction, connection, which... Oh is impacting your work? Oh, yes. Very, very beautifully so, um, because I think when you work alone, you have this very rigid way of doing things and meeting people and interacting with the space, uh, navigating through all of the challenges. Like, for example, I, I'm still yet to locate a place. I was panicking a bit, but I'm like, uh, just calm down. Um, But working with people is lovely. Yeah, I'm actually only opening up in the the last few days. Uh, in the beginning, I was a bit reserved and kind of getting to the space. But I love all the possibilities of collaboration that are coming up, and I love I love I love to see everyone's process and hear the stories and how they work. It's, Very enriching. What kind of impact does it have on you, on your work? Um, I'm a bit more open to especially touching things because usually with, mu with music it's, it's you, either you're uh, playing something on an instrument but with the land Uh, taking off my shoes, for example. It's tactile, and it's another language altogether. Um, so I'm, I'm very challenged in terms of creating something visually, even though I have a blanket that I can wear. I also want to connect to the stage in a very intentional way, so... I think it's challenging me to think like a set designer. Okay. Set and then the music and then the visuals. The music, you brought instruments oh, yes. with you? Yes. What kind of instruments did you bring? So I have instruments that I make. On your own? Yes. For example? For example, I have a baby Cora. It's inspired from the Cora. So it's just like a simple six-string miniature chora that sounds quite delightful. Um, I've also brought another three-stringed one, which is one of my first ones. So I want to have a series of these instruments from one string to seven string. So I'm working on that series just to also challenge myself to be creative with one string, develop a language of one string, and then two strings, and then three strings. I see. So and so and so. Is this rooted in your culture, this string music, if you want to call it like this? Mm, yes and no. Even though I have um, some experience with indigenous instruments that are uniquely and I guess regional um, so a lot of them are 
monochords it's just one one string and then you either pluck it uh, but I've been very curious about expanding from there um, because the Basoto, particularly in, in the 1800s, they were on the move because of the Difaqani. Because of? The Difaqani, re the regional wars like with the Zulu and yeah. all these other groups. So. The Basotho essentially is a group of refugees that have come together to form one nation. So and, uh, under those circumstances, it's, it's not easy to develop or expand on your your recreational things because you're worried about other things. So I've been wanting to tap into taking that idea and expanding from that and honestly just exploring um, mm. because in as much as there's nuance in these single stringed instruments there's also a lot of possibility in having m m multiple strings you have more sound to work with and uh, making it finer and uh, mm. refined more refined yeah. yeah if you have five words to describe the surrounding the environment here what are the five words mm. the sun the sun has been quite uh, instrumental to how I try to navigate so the sun open heart I'll take that as one word uh, Communion, listening, and freedom. Thank you. Thank you.